We have a couple of birch species to learn. This is one of my favorites. This is actually scientifically called Betula nigra. So you might think its common name would be black birch, but in fact, its common name is river birch. This is a beautiful native Pennsylvania tree. It has this gorgeous copper colored salmon like bark, peeling bark. You can sort of recognize its birch nature by that. And it has a pretty distinctive leaf. So I'm gonna just show you the leaf really quickly. The leaf, a lot of people say looks like a Christmas tree. Here's our leaf. And the leaf is triangular and doubly toothed. And when I say doubly toothed, you can see that on the edge it's toothed, but it's big teeth that have little teeth. So we call that doubly serrated or doubly toothed. So there's your river birch leaf and uh, basic sort of triangular pyramidal Christmas tree like leaf, doubly toothed, pretty easy to recognize and distinct from some of the other birch leaves. Um, really nice look at that. But again, it's really the bark of this tree. I'm here at the banks of French Creek and this is a tree that loves to grow as a waterside, riverside. Um, that's why it's called river birch. Really a great uh, floodplain tree that doesn't mind getting its feet wet or having flooded waters around it for some extended periods. So there you go, Betula nigra, the river birch. This is the gray birch. It's one of three birch species that we'll be looking at on our French Central campus. And you can see it's got birch bark and the birch bark has this uh, gray color. It's kind of extra gray this year because it's actually been darkened by the secretions of a whole lot of lanternflies. Um, I hadn't thought of lanternflies as loving uh, the birch trees, but they are. Um, and we have some bald-faced hornets that have come out to uh, to collect some of the secretions of the lanternflies. Um, but the, the bark normally looks about like this. Uh, it's a sort of a, a gray color with some horizontal striping and it's not as peeling as the river birch or the paper birch, but there's your birch bark. Um, what's really notable is the leaves. The leaves are really distinctive. Uh, the gray birch leaf uh, is a reminder of a poplar tree. So I'm going to hold one up here for you. In fact, I'll bring it over here to the black contrast of the window. So what you can see, if it'll focus for us, is a, uh, a leaf that looks a little bit like a flame. Um, it's doubly toothed, like the river birch, has a long tapering point. So it, it really comes to a long narrow tip. Betula populifolia names it for the leaves of a poplar. So Betula is our birch genus and we say populifolia, that means the poplar leaved birch. So it does look a little bit like a poplar. And if I show you a few more, you'll see that the general shape of these is all these long tapering leaves. And again, it's got teeth that have teeth. So we see that, we call that being doubly toothed, that there are larger teeth, but the larger teeth uh, have intermittent smaller teeth. So that's your gray birch. And this is a sort of three trunked gray birch right outside the back of Shellcross, Betula populifolia. This is the sassafras tree. One of the plants whose common name, sassafras, is also its scientific name. So this is Sassafras albinum, and it's in the laurel family, the Lauraceae. That means it's a cousin of cinnamon. It's a cousin of bay laurel, the leaf that people cook with. It's also a cousin of spicebush, one of our really great shrubs. So the leaf of Sassafras is easy to recognize because it's three lobed, but they're rounded long lobes, and I like to call it Casper the Friendly Ghost. So here you've got a really nice Sassafras leaf, you can see it looks like Casper the Friendly Ghost, kinda. Um, and the neat thing about sassafras is first, it has three different leaves. This is also what I call the two thumb mitten. So it's like a mitten with two thumbs, or it's a three lobed leaf. But if we look around on the tree, there are also some leaves that only have one thumb. And it can be just the right thumb, or it can be just the left thumb. So there's actually all three of those. And then there's a simple leaf that has no thumb at all. So if I reach up here, Here's a leaf that's just a one thumb mitten. So you can see this one only has a thumb on one side. That one has a side to the right. And here's one 
And if I pick it off over here, this one is another one thumb leaf, but this one only has a thumb to the left. So now you've seen there's two thumbs, right thumb, left thumb. And then if I look, you can see that among the leaves with the thumbs, there's some leaves that are just simple ovals that have no thumbs at all. So that means the sassafras tree on one tree has four different leaf morphologies, a simple ovate leaf, uh, right thumb, uh, left thumb, and then a uh, two thumbs. Um, so it's a really great tree because it has an important history medicinally. Sassafras root was the source of a really important extract that was made into root beer. It's got a really strong smell and taste and is quite medicinal as a tonic, and it was used in a lot of patent medicines. What we've learned in time is that sassafras root contains a potent carcinogen called saffrol. So today, you're not allowed to sell products that are made from sassafras root extract unless you've been able to remove the saffrol from them. So it would be something that would have been in like sarsaparilla sodas. Sarsaparilla is another plant whose root extract was used to make different patent medicine sodas. And then of course, you know, the birch was the source of birch beer, another soda that's flavored with the flavors from birch root from the sweet birch. So there's your leaf, really cute sassafras leaf. This one, just a one thumb. And we'll say goodbye to sassafras with Casper the Friend of the Ghost, waving goodbye. Sassafras albedum in the Lori C family. This is a linden tree, linden. In the UK, they call it a lime tree. And linden trees are tilia. This is tilia americana, or sometimes there's a broad-leaved linden, tilia platyphyllos, and then there's a little-leaved linden. I first want to show you the fruits. Tilia fruits have two hard berry-like capsules that hang down, but they've got a wing. So they are another kind of helicoptering seed, like maples, but their mechanism for helicoptering is really different, because those are two separate seeds hanging there, and the seeds don't have the wing. The wing is actually a special modified leaf. It's a leaf that forms just with the flowers that develop the fruits. So you can see this narrow brown colored leaf that I'm holding that has two fruits hanging down. That's actually the wing. So when this drops, it actually spins in helicopters. Now, the leaf of a linden is one of our leaves with an uneven base. So if you look at it, what you see is that the base has one side that curves around and the other that's like slashed and goes up at an angle. So it's asymmetric and it's an asymmetric base. It's a toothed edge, so it's got a finely toothed edge, but that asymmetric base, it kind of looks like a heart where one side of the heart got trimmed off. So that's a really key feature for your linden leaf. There are two other leaves that have an asymmetric base. They're both in the elm family, the American elm and the hackberry. So this is a beautiful linden tree. The flowers are really fragrant in the spring and linden flowers are used a lot in cosmetic products. They're used for different eye gels, a lot of things that use linden. It's also used in tea, uh, linden flower tea. But I did want you to just get a really good look at that uneven base. And you can see that sometimes it's the left side that's chopped off. It looks like someone took scissors and just cut it off. Sometimes it's the right side, depending on where the leaf is attached to the branch. They alternate. But that's a really good look at your linden leaf, Tilia americana, American linden also called basswood. So there you go, linden.